Have you ever stopped to ask yourself, where did the moon really come from? How did our little blue planet end up with such a stunning and loyal companion lighting up the night sky? Well, the leading idea among scientists is pretty wild. About 4.5 billion years ago, Earth got smacked by a Mars-sized body named Theia. This cosmic collision was so intense, it launched massive amounts of debris into space, and over time, the debris came together to form the moon. But here's the twist. What actually happened to Theia? Did it just disappear into thin space dust? Did it fuse with Earth? Or is part of it still with us, hidden deep below our feet? That's exactly what we're going to dive into in this video. A fascinating new theory suggests that when Earth and Theia collided, chunks of Theia didn't just vanish. Instead, some of it sank deep into Earth's mantle and might still be there, locked away in two giant mysterious blobs. These blobs are called Large Low Velocity Provinces, or LLVPS, and they're massive. One sits under Africa, the other beneath the Pacific Ocean. Scientists think these unusual formations might actually be leftovers from Thea itself. We'll look at how researchers are testing this theory using advanced computer simulations and what it could mean for everything we thought we knew about the Moon's formation and Earth's inner structure. But first, let's break down what's actually going on inside our planet. Deep beneath the surface, right above the core, lies the lowermost part of the mantle, a searing layer of hot, semi-molten rock. That's where we find the LLVPS. These strange structures are each around 1,000 kilometers thick and together, they cover nearly 10% of the Earth's surface area. They're called low-velocity zones because seismic waves, those vibrations created by earthquakes, slow down when they pass through them. That tells us something's different down there. Maybe it's temperature, maybe it's density, maybe it's chemistry, or maybe it's alien rock from a long-lost planet. So what exactly are these blobs made of, and how did they end up buried in our planet's mantle? Those are the questions scientists have been trying to answer for decades, and that's where this new theory takes things to a whole new level. Let's talk about those mysterious blobs deep inside the Earth, because scientists have been puzzling over them for a long time. There are a few competing ideas out there trying to explain what these LLVPs are and where they came from. First up is the oceanic crust accumulation theory. It suggests that these massive structures are actually made of ancient ocean floor that sank deep into the mantle over billions of years. Here's how it works. Oceanic crust forms at mid-ocean ridges and spreads out across the sea floor. Eventually, thanks to plate tectonics, it gets dragged back down into the Earth at subduction zones. Some scientists think that enough of this old, dense oceanic crust could have piled up at the base of the mantle, forming the LLVPS we see today. But there's a catch. For this theory to work, we'd need a lot of subduction, like way more than we have evidence for. And the chemical composition doesn't quite add up either. So while it's interesting, this explanation doesn't fully stick the landing. Then there's another idea. Chemical differentiation theory. This one says that the blobs are made of primordial material, stuff left over from Earth's earliest days before the planet split into layers. This material might be heavier and richer in iron, which would explain why it sank and settled so deep in the mantle. But again, there are questions. How exactly did this material separate from the rest of the mantle? And how did it survive billions of years of Earth's violent, churning interior without melting or mixing? So yeah, the mystery remains unsolved. But what if we've been looking at this all wrong? What if the answer isn't just inside Earth, but out in space? That's where this new theory comes in. It connects the formation of the Moon to the origin of these blobs in a way that's honestly kind of mind-blowing. The Massive Collision Theory According to this idea, the massive collision between Earth and Thea, remember, the one that formed the Moon, wasn't a direct hit. It was more like a glancing blow. And because of that angle, not all of Thea's material was destroyed or fused with Earth. Some of it kept orbiting, eventually forming the Moon. But here's the wild part. Some chunks of Thea fell back to Earth, 
and sank deep into the mantle. And those fragments? They might still be there today, as the LLVPS. It proposes that the material from Thea that crashed back down to Earth wasn't just any old rock, it was denser and more metallic than Earth's mantle. And when it re-entered, it didn't just sit on the surface. It sank deep into the Earth and eventually settled near the core, forming those strange blobs we call the LLVPS. Meanwhile, the lighter, more silicate-rich parts of Theia were flung into space, and those eventually came together to form the Moon. That's why the Moon has a different density and chemical makeup compared to Earth. It's made of the fluffier, outer layers of Theia, not the heavy core. And what's wild is that this theory can even explain where the blobs are today. See, the angle and direction of the impact suggest that Theia's denser material would have rained back down in specific zones, namely, under what is now Africa and the Pacific Ocean, right where we find the LLVPs. Even their weird, lumpy shapes? That's no accident. The theory says these blobs would have gotten stretched and deformed as they plunged through the Earth's mantle, which is why they don't look like neat little spheres. They're more like giant melted pancakes. Now, when you compare this idea to the older theories we talked about earlier, it actually solves a lot of the problems they couldn't. Unlike the oceanic crust theory, it doesn't need a massive amount of crust to get subducted over billions of years. And unlike the primordial material theory, it doesn't have to rely on unstable ancient ingredients somehow surviving all this time. Instead, it's one bold event, a single massive collision that explains both the moon's formation and the mysterious blobs near Earth's core. Pretty elegant, right? But how do you test something that happened 4.5 billion years ago? That's where things get super high tech. To put this theory to the test, scientists from Arizona State University and the California Institute of Technology used advanced computer simulations to recreate the epic Earth Thea collision. And we're not talking basic animations here. They ran their models on a supercomputer named Mira, one of the fastest in the world, capable of doing 10 quadrillion calculations per second. They ran hundreds of simulations, tweaking everything from Thea's size and speed to its angle and composition, all to track what would happen to its material during and after impact. To make sure their simulations were as accurate as possible, the research team pulled in data from across the scientific world, geophysics, geochemistry, planetary science, you name it. They built a detailed, realistic model of the ancient Earth Thea collision, and the results were published in Nature, one of the most respected science journals out there. And guess what? The results were incredible. Their simulations supported the idea that the moon could have formed from Thea's outer layers, while chunks of its dense core plunged back to Earth and became the blobs we now call LLVPs. Even cooler, the simulations matched reality. The returning material didn't just randomly scatter, it landed in regions that line up with where we actually see the LLVPs today, under Africa and the Pacific Ocean. And the simulations went deeper, literally. They showed that Thea's leftover chunks would have different properties from the rest of the mantle. Things like higher iron content, higher density, lower seismic wave speeds, and higher temperatures. All of these match real-world measurements of the LLVPs from seismic and geodynamic research. That's a pretty strong case for the theory. Plus, they found that this alien material could remain stable and isolated for billions of years, deep in the lowermost mantle, without mixing or breaking apart. Basically, these blobs could just sit there, untouched, ever since that ancient impact. But as cool as this theory is, the scientists admit it's not flawless. The simulations don't include everything. For example, they don't fully model mantle convection, the process that moves heat and rock around deep inside Earth. They don't cover how the blobs interact with the core mantle boundary, where things can get really weird. And while the simulations are high res, they still can't capture the tiny details or guarantee the exact version of events that played out. So, is this the final word on the mystery? Not quite, but it's a major step forward and an exciting possibility that the same epic collision that gave us the moon 
might have also left behind hidden scars inside our planet. What do you think about the idea of alien remnants still sitting inside the Earth? Click on the video on your screen to keep enjoying our content. See you in the next video.